So hello, welcome to this episode of History Hunters. We are today in Columbia State Historic Park in Columbia, California, where they are celebrating Back to the Future, the movie that came out in the 1990s. And there's going to be a festival here. There's going to be a parade. There's going to be a lot of people here dressed up like characters from the film. So join us on this fun episode. So this event today features the unveiling of the town clock, which looks like a fake clock. Well, look, the gears are moving. Looks like you can try your luck shooting a Colt 45, gun to tame the West. These guns just don't look authentic, do they? So we have featured this house before, the Wilson McConnell house where High Noon was filmed. Gary Cooper came right through these gates in the movie High Noon. Now, anybody can come to this state park, but today it's a special event. Celebrate Back to the Future. There's gonna be a parade here in just a little bit, 11 o'clock. And we're gonna probably see some characters from the movie. Don't have any idea what's in store today. There are also some celebrities from the film that are here, some of the minor characters, some of the minor actors that appeared in the film. And look at this. An old fashioned Quartz Mountain stage line right in front of the Wells Fargo office. Just to be clear, none of the scenes of the movie were actually shot in historic Columbia, but it served as the perfect backdrop for the Back to 1885 event. Its intent was to bring together fans of the movie and some of the actors to raise money for the Michael J. Fox Foundation for Parkinson's research. The three-day event took place at three different locations, including a Friday tour of the site where the Hill Valley movie set was built along the Sierra Railroad tracks near the Red Hills outside of Jamestown. Unfortunately, the entire set burned to the ground in August 1996 from a lightning storm that ripped through Tuolumne County. This little town of Columbia has been the site of many movies through the years, a lot of westerns. In fact, this building right here was featured in the movie Shadow Riders with Sam Elliott and Tom Selleck. Actually, I'm a big fan of History Hunters. We're stepping away while these guys step off. Come on, son. You're welcome, sir. Yeah, we don't want to get run over, do we? No, we don't. We don't. No, big fan. Love all the videos. You find interesting topics and bring what I would want to do when I go to a spot and search it out. So it's really good stuff. Where do you live? I live here in Columbia. Actually, I'm part of Friends of Columbia, which we're the nonprofit for the state park. Okay. And we are going to march in the parade. If you'll notice over here, we have people remember the Undertaker. Oh, we have there's the Undertaker. Undertaker. Today we have um, Mark Twain or Mr. Clemens, but he was originally in the movie as uh, George McFly in two and three. He will be in the parade today. Now, where is he at? He is in the back there. He's going to be coming up here in a few minutes. You won't miss him because he looks like Mark Twain. Twain. <laughs> okay. He looks like Mark My Twain. My favorite author. Uh, you have uh, Michael J. Fox, stunt, uh, his double okay. in the movie. So when they were doing all the stuff with him talking to himself and his dad and that sort of thing, uh -huh. he was the person that was okay. in the movie. So he's here yeah. too. So uh, the uh, And then there's uh, most of the people that are dressed up here are fans of the movie that have come for this experience. Mr. Twain, did I you come over? and talk with the history hunter here. Oh, oh uh, we're hunting up some history. I'm a YouTuber. You've come up, uh, you've come to the right place, I reckon. Yeah? Yeah, well, now I don't aim to hornswoggle you here, but we have a, an amalgamation of different times. Uh, care of the this odd time machine that's back there, we've got folk here from just about every era. So you can go ahead and take a look around and uh, have yourself a time. You know, last time I was visiting you, you were in the grave over in New York. Go, go figure that. <laughs> Elmira. <laughs> well, well, then talk, uh, talk to the Undertaker there. He's he seems to get, get yeah. in the, uh, a late bail, uh, early parole. <laughs> you tell me, he'll tell you. He never lets you down. Uh, I hope I'm giving you what you want. Yes. What is your name? Clemens. You call me Sam. What's your role name? Uh, Weissman, Jeffrey. Jeffrey Weissman. Gotcha. There we go. <laughs> If you don't recognize Weissman as George McFly, Marty McFly's father in the film, is because he was made over heavily to resemble Crispin Glover in the second and third sequels. Glover refused to participate in the two sequels and successfully sued Universal Studios for using his likeness and archival footage without paying him. 
We're here with Marvin McIntyre. Marvin J. McIntyre. J. He uses his middle initial. Okay. He is the undertaker. Good morning, Mr. Eastwood. Interest you in a new suit for tomorrow? Uh, I'm, I'm fine. And I wanted to ask you how the movie changed your life in any way. Did it? Well, I get to attend things like this, which is a, a change for me to come up and be amongst a lot of people who are like, hey, I know you. Yeah. Because you, it's not the biggest part in the movie, and you tell people you're in the movie, and they say, where are you? I don't remember that scene. But it's a memorable scene for me. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. But how everybody high, here knows the movie so well, they know more about it than I do. How high was uh, Michael J. Fox to you? Right to here. Right <laughs> he was Adam's apple high. And if you haven't watched the movie, he's obviously measuring Michael J. Fox's height so that he can build the coffin for him, because everybody knows Michael J. Fox is going to get slaughtered. Or Clint Eastwood, I guess you call it, right? That was his name in the, yes, that was the moniker that he, uh, or the non de plume that he assumed. So what was it like working with Michael J. Fox? It, you couldn't meet a nicer person. You couldn't meet a more professional actor. Talented beyond expression and just, it's wonderful. It's very nice when you're acting to look at the other person and see the character rather than the person and that worked with Michael. Excuse me, Mr. Eastwood. I just need to take your measurement. Oh, look, pal, I don't want to buy a suit. <laughs> no, this is for your coffin. When you're out in public, do people recognize you, or is it like me? <laughs> they don't recognize me. Not so much from this film. I do get recognized from a couple of other films. Like which ones? Uh, Fandango is the one I mostly get uh, recognized okay. from. I've been recognized a couple of times from a couple of uh, <laughs> semi-horror films that I did. <laughs> Make sure that we're going here. Uh, so you were up here. Me, that was him. <laughs> so you were. I'm okay. I'm, it's early in the morning. I only had orange juice. <laughs> Nothing in it. Didn't, didn't have a screwdriver. Just had orange juice. Uh, I don't know. You know what? Undertaking. You're the, can, you're the one weaving, not me. Un <laughs> undertaking can be a nerve-wracking experience. Yeah, it was right? quite an undertaking. Uh, Where's my snare drum? <laughs> Do the walk, walk, walk for you. So, oh, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't, I didn't hear it. Thank you. So who else is yeah. from the film that's here that appeared? Uh, Besides Jeffrey well, Weissman. Steve I talked to him. Steve is down there in that car. He's the director of the uh, cinematographer. He, he was the cinematographer and played the photo, photographer yeah, yeah. or photographer, depending on how you wish to pronounce it, Okay. in the movie. Uh, Burton oh, Gilliam. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just move him up there. Is that working out? So he's there. And I'm trying to remember who else. That may be it. Anyway, I want to thank you so much. My pleasure. My I mean, great pleasure. We'll see you probably later. You're signing autographs. Uh, yeah, I'll be up at the thing this afternoon. What are you yeah. charging? I don't charge. I'm one of the people that does not charge. Oh, okay. Yeah. Sweet. It's a sticking point, but they're welcome to it. Yeah. Welcome with All right. Them. Nice to meet you. Thank you very much. Peace out. So Dean Cundy is here. He's in the parade. He's a cinematographer. Hello, sir. How do you do? You're Dean, right? Yes, I am. I'm Jeff Benziger. I'm with the... History Hunters YouTube channel. Oh, really? Yeah, and uh, I've got about 1,100 to 11,000 subscribers. Oh, that's true, yeah. Oh, great. But I was going to ask you, of all the films you've done, how did this one differ? This, to me, was especially fun because it was a Western. Yeah. And I had always wanted to do one, and, and uh, Westerns had fallen out of favor with right. the, the, the general Hollywood right. system. So uh, this was great, but... The fact that it was not just a little uh, cheap, uh, low-budget western. Right. The fact that they built a great town set, um, that there was, you know, great action, great cast. I consider it one of the most fun projects and um, and one of my favorite movies. Ready, gentlemen. Now, there's a story that uh, Michael J. Fox nearly hung himself on that one scene. Were you there for that? I was. I was right front and center and watched them cut him down and... and uh, what and, happened? What what well, malfunctioned? Well, he... When they wrapped the rope around his neck and it had to look tight, but he put his hands in to look like he was trying to save himself. Yeah. Struggling. Yeah. And unfortunately, he put his hand in and pushed against his jugular. When he fainted and didn't answer, uh, they uh, cut him down. And uh, you know, fortunately, he was were the fine. were the cameras off at that point? Uh, yeah, I think we cut uh, when we when yeah. we cut him down. But 
That would be interesting footage to see. <laughs> yeah, it would uh, certainly be historical. Yeah, yeah. Huh. Yeah, it's really sad what's happened yeah. to him. Yeah, you know, with his no, it's, Parkinson's. Um, it, you know, it's great to see this event yeah. um, to help support him, but. Uh, you know, if you've seen his documentary, yes, I have. Um, it's 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 very, you know, it's a great thing because it it uh, makes public right uh, something right. that might otherwise be overlooked or people wouldn't know about, and it becomes very vivid when it's somebody who's been right, somebody young, really, relatively yeah, young. Yeah, exactly. Yes, I knew. Howdy, folks. This is Marty's double for the film. Warning. Let's, let's get the car started. 30 second warning. All drivers to your car. Parade's going to start. Here we have Doc and Clara. Howdy. How's it going? Pretty good. How are you, my friend? Good. Any of the greatest three handers. You watch my show? All the time. Great. Go. Okay. Nice to talk to you. Check it out. There's the DeLorean. All the way from Myrtle Beach. It's a replica, of course. Uh oh. Got some manure going on here. Robert Bennett. He is actually the uh, Marty McFly stunt double, but looks like he's in a load of crap. So far, I've been able to talk to two celebrities from the parade, and we're going to talk to the stunt double that played Marty McFly when he was up here, uh, Back to the Future set. It's not a good place to be behind this manure vehicle. It kind of looks like moss instead of poop. Do you hate manure as much as I do? I hate manure. <laughs> Why do you think I'm wearing my mask? <laughs> oh, I'm holding the box in. And <laughs> is that real? That is real. That's real down there. That, that was courtesy <laughs> gotta, of those two. Gotta make some authenticity here.
That is such a cool car. You know, it wasn't in the movie, but it's certainly an authentic reproduction, as close to it as possible. That you have a picture taken here to celebrate the unveiling of the new Hill Valley clock for all time. 20 bucks. That's not 1885 price for sure. I didn't know what I was doing, but uh, but I you did a good job. I was doing it right because I was brand new. I didn't know what the heck. This is a oh. big YouTuber. Oh, There's right. a lot of Western stuff around here. I've been, really? I've been meaning to meet you. Or I'm glad I finally met you. And I want to talk to you about Slim Pickens because I knew you right. came up for his funeral. Oh, y yes, I did. <laughs> You're right. And that movie was just so hilarious. I, I laughed today. You couldn't believe that film being shot today, could oh, you? No, no, but if we could, Mel Brooks has always said, I know we can't shoot it again. But if we could, we'd be on Blazing Saddles 8, you know? <laughs> oh, boy. That was a great movie. A Back great, up. great picture to be a part of. And, yeah. and if, if it weren't for Mel Brooks, I wouldn't be standing here talking to you folks. Uh, he yeah. hired me away from the Dallas Fire Department, where I, really? I had been a fireman 14 years, and they'd come be in the system. How, how did you get into acting? I had done a picture four months before Blazing Saddles called Paper Moon, uh -huh. which is a great picture. I had a great part. Uh, and uh, I saw an article in the Dallas paper that said some big director by the name of Peter McDonovich was coming to Dallas to direct a picture. And he uh, and the star of the show was Ryan O'Neill, and I thought I might get to see Ryan O'Neill. Uh, so I went to this open call. I'd never been into a in a grade school play, nothing. And I wound up with the fifth largest part in the picture. And uh, did you have parts with Tatum? Oh, all of my scenes were I just Tatum. recently all saw that movie. I need to watch it again. Uh, every but scene I got. Seriously, was it's a great no, movie. No, there's one scene I'm not with, with her. I'm with, just with Madeline Collin and me. But Slim Pickens was a great guy, wasn't he? Oh, one Slim, of a kind. Slim, when we did Blazing Saddles, and I'm, you know, my second film, my second time of being in front of a camera or anything, he just kind of took me under his wing and said, let's go, boy, because uh, you're going to be a whole lot like me. Come on, learn learn what I know, you know? It was great. Yeah, he was. What was it like working with Michael J. Fox? Oh, M Michael uh, was going with a little girl, uh, Nancy McKeon. He was going with Nancy McKeon. And I knew her, knew her family, and they were going together. This is you know, 30 years ago. And, and I got a call one Sunday afternoon, and um, it was Michael, and uh, they were talking about the script from Black like, Future 3. And, uh, and, and Nancy said, well, you ought to get Burton Gilliam into that part. He said, oh, yeah. So they just, the two of them just called me. They didn't talk to Bob Zemeckis. They didn't talk to Bob Gale. They didn't talk to anybody. They just said, hey, we want you in this picture. And, and you know when the star of a picture says, I want that person. Yeah. It usually happens. Yeah. You know? So, so uh, Bob Zemeckis called me uh, uh, the next day and we worked out a deal. Hey! I just told you that even a baby could handle this weapon. Surely you're not afraid to try something that a baby could do. Yeah, I'm not afraid of nothing. Oh, come on. A wonderful time, you know. Now, those night scenes, what, did they take a long time? Oh, yeah, it was... <laughs> Several crazy. nights? It was, uh, it only took two nights, but I was here three weeks because of the weather. Uh -huh. They weren't sure when it was cold, and they weren't sure when they were going to really get to do that whole big uh, celebration right. thing. So I was just up here having a great time, and they'd say, well, you're not gonna do it tomorrow or tomorrow night. And the next day I'd say, well, what do you think? It ain't happening yet. <laughs> <laughs> what was it like working with Tom Wilson? Oh, Tom, I had never heard of Tom Wilson, but boy, he, he had a knack for taking over the scene. You better be looking behind you when you walk. 
because one day you're going to get a bullet in your back. And the, the character that he was, that he played, is nothing like him, you know. He's a comedian, but and he's been to Dallas a few times, and I've seen him right. a lot of times. Uh, but he was just so perfect in, in his uh, delivery for that character. Yeah, I, oh, he was great. He was great. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. All right. Great Burton Gilliam, right there. I would say most people don't know who he is now. So fortunate to talk to these guys today. All right, we have the very nasty Buford Tannen here. That's right, it's me, Bufy. What's the problem? What's your problem? I ain't got no problem. Yeah, you do. This is me being nice. Do you want to see me mean? He's a <laughs> You better watch your language, you gutless passlinger. <laughs> Gutter trash. Hey, boy. Watch out, Ron. I want a mouthful of bullets. I hear you like manure. Manure. Oh, I hate manure. That's <laughs> all so you're getting, you pay me. I did not expect this kind of uh, access to some of these players in the movie. That's, that's so cool. And I get to spend some time here in Columbia. I can have a gunfight at 12 noon, of course. All right, if you'd like to take a seat behind the wheel inside the car, make a donation in Mr. Fusion in the back there, and we'll get you in the car just like this. <laughs> Donations go back here. Hello. So they're actually letting people sit behind the wheel for a donation to the Michael J. Fox Foundation. I'm here with my four kids, and we're great uh, Back to the Future fans. I've been th all these years and everything, and we probably know all the lines to the movies and everything. And when we heard this was going on, and the Michael J. Fox Foundation benefiting from it, we decided we got to come see it. Okay, Marty, when this baby hits 88 miles per hour, you're going to see some serious stuff. <laughs> you nail that voice. Oh, I know that voice, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you came out just for this, all the way to California. Yep. Just for this. Just for this. Great. You get a seat, to get, a, get a see this, get to see the shootout, see this the thing here, so. Because we had to go back to California. I do it too? Undertaker seems confused. Yep. Hey, everybody. Hello again. Did they see my brakes? Did I do the last one with the brakes or without the brakes? I just got braided. You got braided? Yeah. How long is your hair? Pretty long? It's the longest it's ever been, actually. It, it comes down a little past here when it's not braided. Okay. Braiding makes hair shorter because they have to tighten it. That's what you need, is it? How, how long was your uh, on-screen appearance there in that movie? Uh, count the seconds? Yes, absolutely. I, I think total probably less than a minute. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Was it that long? What? It was a, It was at least a minute long? Oh, no, no. I'm saying probably less than a minute. Okay. Absolutely. All right. Not a problem at all. When it when you can do it concisely, that's the best way to do it. You know, these people that ramble on and on, like kind of like I'm doing now. Yeah. Yeah, they, they, they're the ones that tend to leave people to go to a different YouTube channel. <laughs> Guys, a ham? No, come on, kosher, kosher ham. <laughs> Which is very difficult to find. is what I go by here in town. I'm uh, got a local blacksmith shop over there and I do a little science uh, work on the side. Yeah, and you had a little problem with uh, Biff, right? 
Uh, Buford Mad Dog Tannen. Yes, over a matter of eighty dollars. So he said uh, he wanted me to do the shoeing for his horse, which of course I did, but uh, didn't work out. He shot that horse. Now he wants his money back. What are you gonna do? Sucks. <laughs> no, that's how some of us say in the future. It sucks. Very nice to meet you. Oh, I'm gonna give you to the captain. Get out of here, you gutless pie slinger. Settle this once and for all. One, two. Coming out here, huh? Think you could take on you for Tannen? I don't think so. Come on down here, Brunt. No! No! Thought we could sell this like men. You thought wrong, dude. Oh, oh, oh. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, everyone. Yes. Oh. 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 Unfortunately, I missed the unveiling of the town clock, but there it is. You can have your picture taken right here for 20 bucks. So you're doubling as the, uh, the Burt Gilliam character. <laughs> so tell me about the car. I mean, uh, how did that all start? Well, um, my wife and I bought a, a 1982 DeLorean, okay. and uh, specifically to turn it into a time machine. We, we love the movie Back to the Future. It's kind of when we met, you know, we asked each other what our favorite movies were. 
and uh, we both said back to the future. So you got to be real careful when you when you ask questions like that because matrimony may follow. Do you have any idea what your car's worth? Or how much you put into it? Oh, it's priceless for us. I mean, yeah. We have used the car for our own personal reasons. We use it to, to uh, raise money for the Michael J. Fox Foundation for Parkinson's Research. We, we use it a couple of different ways. We, we raise money and awareness. Okay. Because so many people are attracted to the car. Okay. Um, and uh, we've raised, uh, we've we've driven the car over 850,000 miles, and we've raised about that same amount in dollars. Wow. So you tell me what the car is worth. <laughs> and if it cures Parkinson's, it's priceless. Has Michael ever seen your car? He has. He's very aware of us and and uh, and what we do, and he's, he's given us a really wonderful gift, uh, a, a personal acknowledgement. It's on YouTube. Uh, my wife and I built our own time machine about 20 years ago with our own hand, sweat, sweat, blood, and tears. It's got 850,000 miles on it, meaning this car, this key right here. If you like cars, this is the key. Look at that key. Look at that key. It's kind of twisted and bent and warm. Yeah, yeah. That's that's the key that uh, goes in the ignition. Terry's my navigator, co-pilot. You have to change the license plate because that's a little. It's not registered. We do, we do have a, a, a Hollywood plate for, for the stationary event. But we've, we've driven it to 28 countries, all 50 states, and it's been uh, a, kind of a magic carpet for us. That's, that's, that's kind of a term we use for our car. How many, how many cars like that would you say are in the country? Oh, I don't, well, only one like that. We made it ourselves. We made it for our own purposes and our own comfort, uh, and, uh, and we love driving it. Portable balloons. Oh, we, we could fit inside to make this. Have a good day. Oh, thank you. Thank you. There you go. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, no problem. All the fines. God, what I've been dreading all my life. Going in. Are you in the stories? Yeah, yeah. Box. Undertaker's drinking, man. That's not good. That's not good. I mean, what the heck? You're in a coffin. Do this, and you can even, uh, whatever shot you want to face on. I'm looking at the well, cameras. Well, okay. No, just do the shot first. All right, we're doing a video, though. Oh, okay. <laughs> we're doing a video until we do the second shot. Okay, okay. You second, got it? Click. You good? You want to watch the movie up. Then you'll look a little worried, buddy. Ah, get me out of here. Come on. Not dead yet. You're creepy, dude. He's <laughs> brutal. <laughs> what a scene, man. You get to actually be a part of this guy doing the scene. Yeah. That's cool. Thank you. Definitely a body fluid on it. <laughs> oh, cool. So, it's got a signature on it. It's yours. If not, put it back on my stuff for you. No, I'm saying if you want one, take one. I got a bag of them. Oh, you want one, buddy? Were you in any other films in your back? Yeah. Thank you. Okay, so I met up with Bobby Bennett. He was uh, a double in the film, and he's going to talk to us about it a little bit. Actually, I was a stand in and photo double. Okay. Uh, working for Michael for about 20 years. 20 years? Yeah. yeah. So did you uh, work, which projects did you work on? Oh boy, it's hard to remember them all. Teen Wolf, Doc Hollywood, Greedy, American President. I'm sure there's more I just can't think yeah. of. Why were you selected? Why were you always uh, the one actually, to... Actually, Michael and I met when he was doing Teen Wolf. I came in to audition for, to be his stand-in. Okay. We got along great. Uh, our body language and everything was so close. Okay. That it was just a mix. And so we went and did it. Are you the same height? We are the same height. He's about an inch or so bigger in the shoulders. And now I must say, I've shrunk over the years. So I used to be 5'3", I'm 5'2", now Michael's still probably 5'3". I don't think he's shrunk yet. <laughs> so specifically, I understand it was the back of your head that we see at the McFly farm? Well, that, you know, I have to say, honestly, I don't remember the things I did with him. Uh, you know, it's just working day to day. I would double him a lot because, as you know, Michael played several characters. 
So generally, I would be the character that Michael wasn't. So the camera would be on Michael and Michael and... Always the back of your head. Together. Uh, sometimes I in the back of my head. Sometimes I was out of the shot totally. Okay. And, and I was there so that Michael had okay. to eye line for somebody for Michael to act opposite. Then we'd switch around and, and I'd do the other part. Did that ever upset you that you were never on, your face was never on camera? No, no, not really. Okay. But that was the job I was hired to do. No, I, I've had parts in, in some of the things that I did. Or wow. I did a little extra work and things like that. Now, so. Do you still stay in contact with Michael? I have it. Yeah. We, we kind of lost contact. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, Christmas cards or something like that. Wow. That's about it. Yeah, I watched the documentary. It's very sad and what's happened it, to it, him. It breaks my heart. Yeah. It totally breaks my yeah. heart. Yeah. So how long were you up here for the filming of Back to the Future? We were up here probably about three months. Three months. Yeah, we're working mostly at the Western Town. Okay. And uh, a couple locations outside. Have you been back to it since it burned? Uh, I was just there yesterday. It's sad, isn't it? it? Brings tears to my eyes. Man, it's almost like you don't even, you can't even find it. Like all the traces are gone. Yeah. Uh, I worked there, you know, every day for three months. And quite honestly, I couldn't have found it. Yeah. I'm going to walk around there for weeks looking for it. Yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> well, thanks so much for... You're very welcome. Checking out Michael J. Fox in costume. You almost look like him. I try my best. That's a that's the product of years of hard work and winning the genetic lottery. Let's say I'm a Morgan. I'm from Kernville, California. Kernville. Down in if you've ever yeah, I know where Kernville is. Oh yeah. They say that's a long way from here. You're telling me. You have to go down to... I drive into Bakersfield, Bakersfield and then up the 99. Yeah, there's no direct way, is there? You got, even got your Walkman. Huh? More than anything, hell yeah. Look at that. And there I've got this tape. Right there. And cool. then when it works, when the batteries aren't dead, it plays the Darth the song where he's dressed up like Darth Vader. He puts, on, oh. he puts his headphones on his dad's head. Is that Van Halen? It's written by Van Halen. Oh, okay. It was never released. All right. It was just specially done for the movie. So uh, you're obviously a diehard fan. More than anything, absolutely. <laughs> you ever met Michael? A couple of times, actually. Really? At a couple of different convention yeah. appearances. It was a real treat. This was a, rep a replica they released in 2016 that is a screen-accurate rec replica of the skateboard he rides at the begin very beginning of the movie. I did not know that. Edgy. That's cool. The weekend festivities also took place at Railtown, 1897, in nearby Jamestown. It's actually raining or sprinkling right now, but there's actually nothing going on today relating to the Back to 1885 event. However, there is some Back to the Future artifacts over here. The State Park supplied the steam locomotive engine number three, the celebrated movie train, for movie scenes when filming took place in the fall of 1989. So this is the famous movie engine number three, and unfortunately it's being repaired right now, but this is the actual engine that was in Back to the Future 3. It's not going to be rolling today, that's for sure. But this is the actual train that was used in not only... High Noon, Back to the Future, but Gambler 2, a bunch of other films. Gutted today on this Back to 1885 event. Railtown also featured a display of smokestacks used for various movies over the past century, including oh, Back to the Future 3. The production also used this prop lamp, which turned engine number three into engine number 131. So this caboose end was built and mounted on the flat car for Michael J. Fox to hang onto while riding, rolling down the track during filming. Central Pacific. The next day on Sunday, the DeLorean had been set on the tracks for day two of the fun. Memorabilia was also displayed relating to the film, including a reproduction of the dress that Mary Steenburgen wore when she played the role of Clara.
On the way home, I passed by the Red Hills filming location, which Sarah and I visited in 2020. And I invite you to see that video under the video listing. I had an absolute fun time here in Hill Valley, actually Columbia, but I want to thank you for sticking through. I hope you enjoyed this look back at the back of the future and some of the conversation we had with some of the key players in the movie. And if you liked what you saw, I would really appreciate it if you gave us a thumbs up and left us a comment. Are you a fan of Back to the Future 3? I hope so, because it's a really great movie. Thanks so much.